Hey, what's up guys? So, in this video I just feel like uh, chit-chatting a little bit about radar detectors, uh, sharing about my thoughts on some things going on, uh, tell you about some new things that I've got uh, that I'm going to be installing here in my car, uh, stuff like that. So, um, obviously of course the big news is the unit, I've uh, been doing a bunch of videos on that. Uh, those are now shipping, uh, they're going to be delivered here to people within the next day or two, and I'm really glad to see that, uh, primarily because I want to see a bunch of other people, you know, running them and sharing their experiences, especially now that it's all production hardware and software, right? One of the big questions is, what's the best radar detector? And that's definitely one of them that's up there for the running, and I want to hear a lot of other people's, uh, you know, perspectives and opinions uh, to go along with what we've seen in testing, uh, beta testers like myself and the others. So I'm really excited to see kind of like a bigger picture with a lot of other people. So that's kind of one of the main things that me personally I'm really curious about. Now, uh, something else that I've been trying out lately is uh, if you look at my rear window, you'll notice I've got the Uniden R1 set up back there. Uh, I've got the R3 set up on my front windshield, which is running, uh, you know, just as a normal detector. The R1 is set up in the back to um, basically give me arrows. I'll be able to tell, you know, does the front detector go off first, signals in front of me, or does the back detector go off first? Uh, well, the signals behind me, and I've never run a setup like this before. Other people have tried it, and why not? I got two detectors, let's try them out, you know? Uh, that one is set up with uh, KA band only, so I don't have to deal with reaching back to try to, you know, filter or uh, mute K-band false alerts. I've got the power cable right here, so I can just, you know, mute it if needed. Um, and what's nice is I have it set up where I can just see it in my rear view mirror uh, to kind of visually see what's going on. It's kind of like if somebody's sitting right here, it would be kind of loud, you know, because it's right by their ear, so I have the volume turned down. So I don't know how well it's going to work in practice, especially once the novelty wears off. Um, and I mean, in my car, I've got the top, right? And the weather's getting nice. It's almost summertime. So I'm wanting to put the top down and having to take a radar detector on and off the back window, deal with the power cable and all that. I don't think it's going to be a good plug and play solution. I mean, I run my rear dash cam there and it's great because I can leave it alone and it's fine top up or down, but not so much there. Uh, that would be something where, uh, it, for my next car, I think it would be nice to get something with a little bit more room. Uh, I love the Miata. It's a fun car. It puts a smile on my face every time I drive it. Like, I love this car, you know? Um, but when it comes to radar detector testing, it's a little bit cramped in here. There's not a ton of room. So uh, I plan on installing a bunch of different remote detectors, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. And having the extra room to run cables or, uh, you know, different control boxes and hardware just to tuck everything out of the way. I don't have a ton of space in here, so it'd be nice to have something uh, with more room for testing purposes and whatnot, you know? Um, as far as running a rear radar detector, I do wish I had, well, a longer car just so I can move that guy farther back. There's always the possibility that the two radar detectors could interfere with one another. And uh, because they're in closer proximity, they're a couple feet away, I don't know, three feet, whatever it's going to be. Uh, I like the fact that the detectors are actually pointed in opposite directions. That should help kind of uh, minimize or reduce any possible interference. But uh, anyway, without getting into too many details, that's kind of something fun I'm trying with. I don't think I'm going to run it full time, but I think as like a, maybe a special purpose driven solution, I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, now, on the note about kind of the best radar detector, um, that's always a big question, right? I'm glad to see we've got some really good ones coming out that, quite frankly, are better options than a lot of the other options that are out there, which is really simplifying the decision-making process. So instead of having to give people a list of 10 different options, you know, uh, the list is actually really shrinking because we have the new Unidens, which is by and large replacing a lot of the other options that are out there, like the Redline, even the Redenso Pro SE, etc. Um, now, some of the other ones that I've been running lately myself, uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of arrows. So uh, two detectors that I've been running recently, the ones with the arrows, the V1, and the Max 360. Uh, I need to talk a little bit first about kind of uh, my driving style and preferences because that's actually changed a little bit, uh, which has affected kind of my preferences on detectors. And let's actually talk about uh, the V1. Uh, we'll start with this. This has long been one of my favorite detectors, and I used to run it all the time before a lot of the newer detectors were coming out. Redensos, Unidens, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was a great detector. I ran it with Yavi 1, and what I loved about it was it provided so much useful information. That was great for me at a time when... Uh, I liked having my car feel like a fighter jet cockpit or something. I had mounts and phones and displays and lights and controls and tons of information at my fingertips and I could look and see everything that's going on. And from a situational perspective, that's a ton of fun. That was also really useful for where I used to live because of the fact that uh, there was a lot of lower power K-band in use, uh, especially around shopping centers. And there was a high risk of uh, maybe missing an alert because it got locked out um, you know, in a shopping center area. And I really needed really good lockouts, which is what I really loved about Yavi 1, the phone display. And it does an amazing job of helping you pick out a needle in a haystack. And for that, uh, again, as like a purpose-driven tool, it's phenomenal. And I love it for that. 
Now, I've been wanting to simplify my setup. Uh, I'm an iPhone guy, not an Android guy, so I've been uh, using V1 driver instead with my V1, and I really like it because of the fact that, one, it just runs off my iPhone. Uh, number two, it actually does a better job of reconnecting in the background. And uh, with Android, you have to use some third-party apps like Tasker or Llama so that when you get in your car, your uh, V1 you know, connects to the app and everything starts up and launches. Uh, with V1 driver, due to the way iOS is designed and the way the app is designed, you can actually just get in the car and it will automatically reconnect in the background for you so it makes it nice and seamless. So it, it does a better job of turning this guy into this guy, meaning you automatically have the GPS lockouts like this guy has without having to putz around with the phone as much, which is kind of what I'm leaning towards at this point. Um, you know, I want a simplified setup. I don't want to deal with, you know, taking mounts up and down all the time, you know, uh, or detectors even up and down all the time. It's cool to experiment for a little while, but that's not what I want full time. Additionally, where I drive now, I see very little radar enforcement. I actually wish I saw more enforcement because that would give me more opportunities to play with and test out all these detectors and I could get more videos for you guys, you know, but I don't actually see that much radar enforcement. Uh, additionally, what I do see is constant on on the highways, which like any detector is going to be able to do a reasonably good job on. I don't need a unit in or a red line for where I live, the level of performance, you know? Uh, when I head out into the mountains or into the boonies, that's a different story, but just driving around town, uh, what I'm interested in more is like something that's just simple, sort of sits in the background and just alert me when there's a cop around and shut up when there's not, <laughs> you know? Kind of the, uh, the general consumer perspective. I've sort of mellowed out in that regard and I want something simpler that's more plug and play and just works. Uh, now, I like V1 driver with the V1 because it helps me do that, but when I do want the information, like if I get an alert, I don't actually have the information that I want here. Like to give you an example, I had an encounter the other day where I had some K-band falses and I had a uh, KA alert ahead. And just with the blinking arrows and signal strength meter and band stuff, I couldn't actually really tell what was going on. I would have to go look at my phone to figure that out, and it was a lot tougher just looking here. I've noticed other detectors can do a better job at that, and, uh, you know, I sometimes need the frequency to figure out is this a false or a legitimate alert um, to, you know, differentiate the signal strength from the legit alert from the false alert. Being able to do that is really helpful. And this I found like without the phone, it's not as helpful just looking at the display. I used to have a concealed display on my dash with custom colors and it would light up blue for KA band and yellow for K band, like different colors. And that really helped me differentiate things. But the stock V1 without the phone or modded CD, I do find it a little bit more challenging. And if I want to look at my phone, usually V1 driver is running in the background and I'm running Waze or something in the foreground. So I'm going to have to go in to look at my phone. And uh, for something that I want sitting more in the background, I'm not finding it to be uh, as helpful of a solution as some of the other options. So that's one thing that I like about this guy is just the fact that I could see the frequency here and it shows me multiple signals and you know the arrows and everything are here. Uh, it's got a phone of course, but that's just for Escort Live, which whatever, I mean, it's fine. But even Escort Live will show up here on the display um, as opposed to Waze, which I'm gonna have to look down at my phone, you know? So I like that kind of integration aspect and just plug and play and it sort of works. I don't like the BSM filtering on this guy. That's actually something Escort is going to be uh, updating. There's an update coming for the Max 360, which is going to be uh, improving their IVT, uh, in-vehicle technology blind spot filter, um, and also fixing uh, a quirk with the lockouts where it will keep locking out a signal that's already been previously locked out. So that's a bug that they're working on. And they're going to be improving the blind spot filtering. So I'm really glad to see that. It's been a long time coming. I don't know what's taking so long with it. They've been talking about it for a while. It's firmware 1.6, which is going to be coming out, or I guess 1.1 if you have a newer Max 360. But anyway, firmware update coming that should be helping. Speaking of updates, with this guy, we've been waiting for a couple of years now for the updates for the display and the underlying hardware and whatnot. So that would be cool. I mean, it'll give us the frequency display on the front of the V1, and it's going to improve the performance and the filtering aspects and all that stuff. I've done videos on that in the past, but... Uh, That'll be really cool. I think I'm going to like this detector even more once it does get updated. I don't know of a time frame. Again, we've been waiting for years. So don't hold your breath <laughs> as far as when V1 updates are going to come out, but there's that. Now, uh, something else that I want to do is install a bunch of different remote detectors in my car. I've got the original STIR, the Redenso HD+, the Net Radar, and the Stinger VIP. Uh, I've got an appointment scheduled for Friday to actually drill a hole through my firewall to make it easier for me to run a whole bunch of different cables through the firewall in and out of my cabin and do all that kind of stuff. I used to run the Stinger VIP, but it was a pain to run that cable. Uh, I don't have a ton of room left in here, so I'm going to be installing a new one. Anyway, uh, 
that's going to be really good for testing purposes to have a bunch of different remotes to test and compare. Uh, I think that kind of similarly, once the novelty of that wears off, I'm probably just going to be running like the Stinger full time, you know, along with the unit or something. That's my guess is what I'm going to wind up doing. Maybe the net radar as well. We'll see how that fares. But uh, as far as the Stinger, there's actually been some firmware updates coming for that, um, which has improved the detector. Currently, it's on version 4.0.52. There's been some improvements to the lockouts, BSM filtering, blah, 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 blah. It looks like the detector is actually getting a lot better. I used to run the Stinger, and I spent a lot of time, you know, helping test it and fix bugs and submit logs and suggest improvements and all that stuff. And after a while, it got kind of old, and I got kind of tired of that. So I'm glad to see that it's you know, now being really improved. So I've actually got it sitting right here. I'll, I'll get it reinstalled in my car. You know, I'll put this in here. i uh, got to, you know, do the antenna and everything. So I'll work on that. I'm not super gung-ho about getting the remotes installed because, I don't know, now that I got the unit in, the rest is just for fun, I guess, to be perfectly honest. I mean, it, yeah, it'll be cool to run a Stinger and there's improvements over the unit in, but I don't know. I don't feel like I'm really missing stuff as much as I used to. Like I'm feeling pretty satisfied with these new detectors. So that's pretty cool. Um, something else is, oh, I know you guys are probably going to ask, speaking of remotes, the Mac CI 360. I don't have any plans uh, in the immediate future to acquire one and to install one. Uh, there's some other people that are testing one. Jammers are looking not too great. And uh, Escort is saying if the demand for a version of the Max CI 360 without laser jammers is sufficient, they'll release a radar only version, a lot like they did with the 9500 CI with the jammers uh, and the STIR Plus without the jammers. That I'd actually be a lot more interested in. I mean, I've got my ALPs and they're already outperforming the jammers that the Escort has. I don't want to get into that too much, but stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, if they release a version just with the radar detection, I think that could be pretty cool. It'd be fun to pit that against the Stinger, against the Unidens, and just see how that's faring. I'm personally a lot more interested in uh, radar stuff than in all the laser jamming stuff, and that's just my own personality and preferences, you know? So that would be cool to see. Uh, something else that's coming down the line, and this is just a rumor, people are speculating about the possibility of the replacement to the red line, which should most likely be, uh, you know, a a windshield mount version of the Max CI. So it'll be an M7, so likely a little bit larger than the red line. Chances are it'll have GPS, right? It'll give you GPS lockouts. And chances are it'll be similar in performance to the Uniden, maybe a little better or worse, I have no idea. The Max CI, it's actually, uh, so far with early, early testing, the performance is a little bit less than the Uniden, but that's the Uniden on the windshield and the Max CI behind a, a Tesla bumper. So it's not quite apples to apples, but just to get some data, you know? So assuming that detector comes out, it's probably going to be double the price of the Uniden for similar performance and uh, BSM filtering, hopefully better, just to give Escort an advantage and the auto lockout. So if that gets released, we'll have to see how desirable that'll be. I mean, I'm going to be interested, of course, because new flagship from Escort, cool, you know, um, but we'll have to see kind of how it fits into the big t picture alongside the other detectors. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of my thoughts on stuff so far. Uh, something I'm curious about uh, from you guys, like, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, one of the things that I'm most curious about is uh, other people's, you know, impressions of the Unidens. You know, is it the ultimate radar detector? Is it the best radar detector? I think it's definitely possible that it could be one of them, but you've also got like the V1 in certain instances, or maybe the Max 360, or maybe you'd want to opt for a remote and get a Max CI or a Stinger, you know, there's definitely other options to consider. But I think it's one of the top competitors, one of the best, you know, possibilities for the best radar detector. And so what I'm curious about, especially now that the detector has started shipping and people are going to be receiving them over the next couple days, is what your guys' thoughts are of that detector. You know, if you're ordering one, once you start driving one, I'm really curious, you know, what's your background? Do you find it uh, better than whatever you were running before, you know? Or if you haven't ordered one, what are your thoughts based on just what you've seen so far and your familiarities with other detectors from other manufacturers, you know? So I'm really curious at this point about just gathering more sample data, especially now that we've got production units going out to a lot more people, a lot more perspectives and opi opinions and experiences to be shared and a lot more sample data. So me personally, that's one of the things that I'm most interested in right now is seeing other people's reactions and take on the new Unidens, especially compared to some of the other detectors like the V1, the Rodenso Pro SE, the Rodenso XP, the Max 360, etc. So uh, if you're interested in the detector or you've ordered one or whatever, definitely let me know your thoughts. Uh, that would be super helpful and I'm really curious to hear that. So anyway, that's kind of my take on uh, things that 
I'm working on here in my car that uh, I've got set up, uh, my thoughts on different detectors, things I've been testing myself, and so on. So anyway, thanks for watching. Looking forward to hearing what you guys think. And uh, until next time, see you guys in the next video.